Ireland have been the most dominant team in international rugby over the last couple of years. The way they've played the game has captivated audiences right around the globe, commanding respect from opposition fans. Some people are pretty quick to discredit Ireland after a single loss, but one result shouldn't define this team, and the legacy they'll leave behind both now and in the future. And to give some context on just how incredible they've been, 81% winning record since 2019, this is practically unmatched by any other international coach in history. Their most recent loss came on the back of a 17 game winning streak and they spent 16 months of being the number one side in the world. They were so unstoppable, they didn't even have space for the World Cup in the trophy cabinet. After taking home the Six Nations, Grand Slam, Triple Crown and Coach of the Year in 2023, I'm sure there's a bunch of others that aren't springing to mind at the moment. Now, before I answer the question, should Ireland change the way they play the game? Let's take a look at how they made rugby great again. Make America great again. What they've done in attack has been the focal point surrounding their success, and it's for good reason. As fans, we've become so used to winning teams playing high percentage rugby through kicking and territory, which isn't always the most entertaining game plan. Instead of following the crowd, Big Balls coach Andy Farrell decided Ireland were going to play ball in hand rugby, something that many teams have aspired to do over the years, but just haven't managed to win while doing it. Which I guess is what all us rugby fans can't help but to admire. Ireland were running around any and every team. They didn't play safe, they forced a the result in their favour. They controlled the game with ball in hand better than any team. It seemed like they eliminated the power of luck by not playing to the percentages. It was inspiring, fluid rugby, characterised by this diamond shape where seemingly every player had several options. Every phase, everywhere you look, there were bodies in motion. And what made this so mesmerizing was, if the ideal attacking shape didn't go to plan, it didn't really matter. There were so many bodies moving in and around the ball that allowed Ireland to relentlessly pressure defenders. The player in the pocket hanging out the back meant the ball wasn't just limited to the pot of forwards running off the ruck. They could almost get the ball to any area of the field at any moment, and they used this option all the time. Most other teams were needing to use a couple of phases to set this up or running it off a set piece. Essentially for Ireland though, it meant they were able to send waves of attacks at defenders for the entire game. Just to put into perspective how good their attack was, even when they got bounced out of the World Cup, they had the upper hand on the All Blacks in runs, passes, defenders beaten, offloads, line breaks, possession, territory and 7 plus phases. All stats which usually the All Blacks dominate whether they win or lose. What makes this even more crazy when you think about it is, besides maybe Bundy Arke, they weren't loaded up with power runners yet dominating the attacking stats. They were loaded up with fitness and skill, meaning they could have some of the fastest ruck speed we've ever seen, and continued to run lines and shape at defenders to gain an advantage. Defense for the most part doesn't deliver the highlight reel moments compared to attack. But they had some traits that may just change the way people approach defense moving forward. Often disadvantaged by size and power, they weren't motivated by the big hits. They used intelligence to negate aggression and line integrity to negate mismatches. Their speed and fitness around the park meant they could recover very quickly and found ways to halt the momentum of opposition teams that were genius. What I'm getting at is they could turn an opposition line break into a turnover quicker than any other side. They were able to get numbers around the ball extremely quickly and literally dared opposition teams to try and get around them knowing that they would get more numbers around the ball. What was particularly frightening though about this Irish side is they could change their defensive systems in a split second with the smoothest of transitions. This level of adaptability meant they weren't coming in with a single game plan. They were coming in with many and could counter your every move. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Enough of the yakking ugly, just tell me, should they change the way they play the game? Absolutely. No, nah, no, nah, that was rude. While many fans and pundits have called their lack of test match rugby the reason why they went down, they had beaten literally everybody a couple of times over heading into the World Cup. In fact, they were the only team to beat the Springboks and went down to one of the only nations that could match fire with fire, the All Blacks. You see, they've branded a style of rugby that finally counters the rugby kicking meta. It's a style of rugby that every kid at home can watch and aspire to become. A style of rugby that makes us proud of the game. They've already started transforming the way we look at different positions on the field. And let's face it, Ireland are possibly the most cursed team at Rugby World Cups, never getting past a quarterfinal. Do you agree with me that they're ahead of their time at the moment and that by the 2027 World Cup, many teams will have adapted their play style? 
I really think with the way rugby is trying to speed up the game, future law changes will play into Ireland's hands even more so. But let me know your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching. Yeah.